in a very um, heavy topic. Now a lighter one, light in darkness. Do you get my pun? Light in darkness? <laughs> a lighter topic? Yeah. See, no one responded, so I had to like explain my pun. All right, now we uh, look into um, when Jesus spoke to the people in John 8 and said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. These, these verses in John are just so inspiring, so simple and yet so profound. But when he said it, he's speaking to the Pharisees before and after this verse. He's speaking to the Pharisees how they don't get it. And so the walk in darkness is likely referring to them, those who are living a life contrary to God's will. There's an implicit indictment of Jesus, uh, of Jesus' opponents who still walk in darkness because they refuse to believe in him. This sets up the contrast in chapter 9 between the man born blind. We're going to spend quite some time on that. Have you ever read that passage, the man born blind? It's actually... Who sinned? Who? Yeah, it would be a great play and it would be there would be a lot of comedy involved it's very funny so we'll see that so this man born blind receives both physical and spiritual sight but the pharisees are gradually losing their sight and so it's kind of an interesting contrast where the pharisees go into deeper darkness whereas the man born blind goes into greater light but before we get to that we're leading up to it. There's a courtroom drama set up from the beginning of John. Did you notice it? In John 1.15, John said he testifies, or John the Apostle, writing about John the Baptist, says that he testifies concerning Jesus. And as for the law given to Moses, Jesus brings grace and truth. So there's tes testifying, there's the law, there's this courtroom language from the beginning of John, in John 1, 15 and 17. But we're on John 8 right now. The Pharisees challenge Jesus. Here you are, appearing as your own witness. Your testimony is not valid. This is 8, 13. There's the word testimony again. There's the word witness. You're appearing as your own witness. Here's Jesus' answer. Even if I testify, testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid. For I know where I came from and where I'm going, but you have no idea where I come from or where I'm going. A little bit harsh. You have no clue. <laughs> it's like meeting someone on the road who doesn't know where they're going, and they, they say to you, so... How do I get to where I'm going? And your answer is, well, any road will get you there if you don't know where you're going. <laughs> Actually, I'm quoting Alice in Wonderland when I say that. Okay, well, back to Jesus. Jesus continues, In your own law, it is written that the testimony of two witnesses is true. I'm one who testifies for myself. The other is my Father who sent me. There you have it. Mm -hmm. So Jesus has satisfied their law that you need two witnesses. But my question to you is, how is the Father? How do we get the Father's testimony? How is the Father a witness? Any ideas? Well, he does it through signs and wonders and 